Hello, my name is Matt Max. Welcome back to Let's Build an 8-Bit Computer. Today I want to talk about the process of level shifting. Level shifting is something you need to do once you have multiple different kinds of ICs in your circuit. For example, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that this IC right here looks a little bit different from those other ICs, right? The print is a little bit different. They use, use a different color. And indeed, this is a different IC. This right here is a 7400 TTL. And all the other ones are CMOS. Now, you see that there are resistors around this. And there is a reason for that. And the reason for that is the following. Now, in a perfect world, we only deal with ones and zeros. But in reality, we don't just have ones and zeros, right? If you look at a binary signal over time, in theory, right, it should look something like this. Okay, this being voltage and this being time. In a perfect world, okay, this right here is zero volts, that's zero. And this right here is, what is it actually? How do you define that? And the answer is, well, that is defined by the IC manufacturer, right? There is no definition what one is in volts. It's defined by the IC manufacturer. And also, not only that, but this doesn't look so neat in reality. It's maybe like, more like this, right? It goes up and down a little bit. Okay, maybe your supply voltage goes up or down a little bit, and then this goes up and down too. So in reality, you do not have a clear cut one, the one will be somewhere in this area, right? So you have to accept everything above a certain level. And the main problem, and why we need to do level shifting in the first place, is that different types of ICs have different levels. They have different definitions of what a one is. For a CMOS, high, so that's the logic one, logic one, that's also called high, right, is somewhere above 3.5 volts, okay? So it's bigger 3.5 volts to maybe 5 volts, okay? So for a CMOS, high is in this range. For a TTL though, high is in a different range. For a TTL, High is between 2.7 and 5 volts. So it's somewhere in this area. And that's a problem. That's a big problem because it means that a TTL only has to output maybe 3 volts to be over this net level, whereas the CMOS has to output at least 4.5 volts because you want to be above this level, you know, to be secure has to output at least a 4.5 volts to be on this high level. And that means that once you mix different kinds of ICs, you run into a problem because your TTL might output somewhere in this area right here. Even if it's one, it will not be detected as one by your CMOS because it's, the voltage is too low. So let's actually look at our circuit that we have right here whether or not this is actually the case. So in our circuit right here, again, I have a TTL over here and I'm just going to connect one of the outputs of the TTL to something over here so we can measure it. All right, and now you see why the cheapest multimeter that I listed in the go-to-have category in the first episode of the series is a nice idea because now we can actually use it to measure our voltage. So I'm just going to measure our voltage between ground and this right here and let's see what it is. Well, it cannot be zero. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, it should actually turn on my power supply. I believe that's a good idea, isn't it?
And I should also plug in my power supply, that's also a great idea. <laughs> and now we can actually measure this voltage. Okay, so now we see, okay, it's actually 3.7. So 3.7, that is high enough, okay? 3.7 is actually in our range that would be, you know, accepted by CMOS as being a high, as being a one. But, you know, I could be lucky with this, right? Maybe this TTL has 3.7, maybe another one only has 2.7. And also, again, the voltage is not really stable. It goes up and down a little bit, right? The power supply output voltage goes up and down a little bit, and so also this can go up and down a bit. I measured the same IC with 3.4 volts, which would be underneath this level, which would not actually be considered high. So 3.7 is a little bit low, in my opinion. I want to get a little bit higher. So how do I actually get higher? The process of changing your voltage up or down is called level shifting, right? So what we actually want to do right here is we want to take this red line and we want to move this red line up until it's about here so that we are in the high area of our CMOS. So how do we do this? Well, we can do it by using a pull up resistor. We already talked about a pull down resistor. If you have a logic gate, like an ant, and this is connected to 5 volts, and you want this to be zero, you cannot just leave it like this. Because it will always always be there will always be some voltage. Right? You need to connect every input. So what we did in the past is we put a resistor to ground and that pulled this voltage down to a level that is considered zero. So what we had here is we had a voltage that was like this, and then we added the resistor, and the resistor pulled it down to about this level. We can do a very similar thing with a pull-up resistor. So if we get something that's about 3.4 volts, but right here we need, you know, about 3.5, or over 3.5, what we can do is we can add a resistor right here and connect it to 5 volt. Instead of connecting it to ground, like we did here, we connect it to a higher voltage than this line has. And this causes our voltage to be pulled up. Based on how high the resistance of your resistor is, it will be pulled up differently. But you will also lose some power because obviously some of the power will just you know, flow through the resistor. In this case, it will just flow to ground. So you don't want to choose it too small. In my example, I'm just going to use one kilo ohm. Usually you want something between one and 10 kilo ohm, that's fine. So that's a one kilo ohm resistor and I'm just going to attach this over here to five volts. Okay, and we start it all up. And now I'm going to measure the voltage again. And let's see what we have now. Now we have 4.6 volts. Before we had 3.6 and now we have 4.6. So it's one volt more and it's really close to five volts. So that's probably about the best we can get. And it's good enough. That is good enough. Because with this, we are 100% in the high range of our CMOS. The high range of our CMOS begins with 3.5 volts. And here we have 4.6, it's more than a volt over the minimum. So we can safely say, yes, this will always trigger the CMOS. This output will now be able to always trigger the CMOS. Even if you know, the power supply you know, voltage drops down a little bit or anything like that. So whenever you use different ICs in one circuit, you need to keep in mind that the ICs might have different definitions of what high is, what a logical one is. And if they use a lower voltage for a high, for a one, then you might just want to use a pull-up resistor like this one, right? Just add a resistor to the output. Like this. I now added the resistor to one of the outputs of this IC, 
and that fix, that fix the problem, right? That will get it up like we measured to about 4.6. So it's more than one world above what we actually need to trigger our CMOS. My name is Matt Max. Thanks for watching this episode and tune in next time.